Question. When is the last time that an Olympic champion in the 1500 went on to successfully defend their title in the following Olympic Games? Answer, 1984 in Los Angeles. For this Olympics, Sebastian Coe from Great Britain unleashed a classic finishing kick to win his second consecutive 1500 title, outkicking his fellow countryman Steve Cram from Great Britain with a time of 332.53, a time that back in 1984 was a new Olympic record. This Olympic double has been one of the most difficult and challenging feats to fulfill in all of athletics. And even though runners such as Hisham El Garouge, Bernard Lagat, Nick Willis, and Peter Snell have competed over the past half a century, they were never quite able to complete this task in their careers. This brings us to a very compelling story in 2024, and it all revolves around Jakob Ingebrigtsen from Norway, who is trying to win his second consecutive Olympic title in the 1500. Back in 2021, a 20-year-old Inga Brixen took down a very strong field to win his first global title in this event. Running a nearly perfectly executed race, he took down Timothy Chariot, Abel Kipsang, and Josh Kerr to win this title, and with a time of 3 minutes, 28.32 seconds, he broke the Olympic record with this performance, and this record still stands today. This performance still stands as one of the big highlights of Jakob Ingebrigtsen's career, and it is noteworthy to mention that in this very final, the top six finishers all broke the previous Olympic record, showcasing one of the fastest 1500 races of all time. This convincing win made Jakob the new face of the 1500, and even though he has gone on to run incredibly well since this Olympic gold, another global title has unfortunately continued to elude him. In 2022, the British athlete Jake Whiteman outkicked Jakob to fulfill a shocking upset in Eugene, Oregon. And just one year later in Budapest, Hungary, another British runner, Josh Kerr, also outkicked Jakob over the final 200 in an eerily similar way to Jake Whiteman. Despite breaking various European records and even a few world records since this Tokyo showing, Jakob has fallen ever so short in the 1500 meters in the Global Championships, despite mostly being favored to win both events. This brings us to 2024, another Olympic year is upon us, and 1500 meter immortality is officially on the line. Now, unlike previous years, the landscape of this event has mostly been focused on events that have transpired away from the track, with Jakob and Kerr providing the world with some pretty intense smack talk in various articles and interviews. It has been pretty entertaining to see these stories unfolding as both athletes claim that they are in fact the ones to beat moving into Paris. However, this video is going to be focused exclusively on actual performances that have already taken place this season, because at this point, Jakob is still nursing an injury and he has not competed once, which definitely strays away from his typical preparation. And while Jakob still claims that he is in good fitness, many other athletes are already throwing down incredible performances. And in the minds of many track fans right now, things are not looking good for Jakob Ingebrigtsen. Starting with the most recent, we have to look at last year's World Championship bronze medalist and fellow countryman Narvin Nuros from Norway, who just won a pretty huge 3000 meter race in Madrid, Spain. This was an amazing performance, and given that he achieved a final 200 meters in around 27 seconds to win this race in 7 minutes and 41 seconds, this actually shows something quite significant moving into the Olympics. Since the beginning of this season, Nuros has continued to express that he is in better shape right now than he has ever been in his life, even when he made it to the podium in last year's World Finals. And don't forget, he only finished 0.03 seconds behind Ingebrigtsen during last year's World Championships, closing his final 400 in 52.61 seconds, and he also closed his final 200 in 26.1. Nuros has quickly proven that he is perhaps the most underrated opponent against Jakob in the world. And speaking of underrated, we need to talk about Yard Nagus from the United States. In this year's Milrose Games, Nagus clocked a time of 3 minutes, 47.83 seconds. And this was not only a world lead, but it was the third fastest indoor clocking of all time, only behind the world record of Yomif Kajelcha and the American record of Yard Nagus himself. This was also a performance with rather inconsistent splits, meaning that with better pacing from the gun, he could have easily broken the world record, which stands at 347.01. With Nagus's rapid rise to the top of the world rankings, his unbelievable 343 mile in last year's pre-classic, and his victory over Josh Kerr in last year's Zurich Diamond League meeting, Nagus is an easy pick as a huge rival against Jakob. 
And speaking of huge rivals, we have to mention Josh Kerr, who has already done something quite amazing this season. With just one race, Kerr proved to the world that his talents go far beyond the 1500, as he broke the indoor two-mile world record with a time of 8 minutes, 0.67 seconds. This time took down the previous world record of none other than Mo Farah from Great Britain by almost three entire seconds, and with a final 400 of 56.97 and a final 200 meters of 27.79, Kerr showcased that his strength is equally as impressive as his speed, and when it comes to tactical or fast-paced races, he is certainly ready for anything. Now, before we jump into Jakob Ingebrigtsen and the issues that he will be facing against the other runners in the world, we have one more athlete that is showcasing something quite impressive this season, and that athlete is Cole Hawker from the United States. In just one month, Hawker has put forth some of the most impressive performances that we have seen this season. In the same race as Josh Kerr, he clocked a two-mile performance of eight minutes and five seconds, which now places him at number six on the all-time list. But it was really what he did in the United States Championships that makes him such a threat. In the 1500 meters, Cole Hawker was up against very talented competition, including Hobbs Kessler, the 2023 Road Racing Mile Champion, and the winner of this year's New Balance Grand Prix over Jake Whiteman. But with an unbelievable sprint finish, Hawker won this race by well over a second, and he closed his final 200 in 26.76. When Hawker's kick is on, it is really on. Back in the Tokyo final, Hawker's final 400 meters was actually the fastest in the entire field, as he closed his final lap in this Olympic debut in 54.70. Since the Tokyo Games, Hawker has been one of the most consistent and talented middle distance runners in the world, achieving amazing new personal records and winning numerous titles for the United States. And given this amazing kick and early showing in 2024, perhaps he can reach the podium in this year's Olympic Games. This brings us back to Jakob Ingebrigtsen. In a recent interview, both Jakob and his brother Henrik stated that Jakob still has to be considered as the favorite moving into Paris, as Henrik stated that on a bad day, Jakob is always there, but on a good day, no one is even close. Now, there is some truth to say that on a bad day, Jakob is always there, as even during sickness and during subpar performances, Jakob has still finished in the top three. But to say that on a good day that nobody else is even close is just not true, especially in a global championship. In last year's Prefontaine Classic, most people agreed that Jakob was back to full health, and in both the 3,000 meters and the one-mile run, he went on to take some pretty incredible victories with all-time top performances. But in both races, he had very intense competition, as in the 3,000, Yumif Kajelcha was but one one-hundredth of a second behind, and in the mile, Yarb Nagus was also right there, breaking 344 along with Jakob. In recent interviews, Jakob has also talked about how his best event is likely the 5,000 meters, as his aerobic engine is just better fit for longer events. But he also stated that he just wants the 1500, which is an event that carries much more history in his opinion. This is where the challenges really start to surface for Jakob Ingebrigtsen. Compared to many other great athletes, Jakob doesn't quite have the raw sprinting speed of everyone else. Again, he does have a massive engine, and he can regularly drop competition over longer distances. But when it comes to an Olympic or World Championship final, an event with no pacers, a victory really requires nothing short of perfection for Jakob Ingebrigtsen. In this year's Olympic Games, Jakob will have to compete with every single one of these previously mentioned athletes, from Hawker to Nagus to Kerr and Nuros, and also Jake Whiteman, who is still coming back from injury. However, I do expect him to show up when it truly matters. And if just one of them has a very good day with a solid kick ready at the right time, it will certainly be difficult for Jakob to hold off everyone. It's also important to mention that the racing style of the 1500 has shifted drastically over the past four or five seasons as faster races help thin out the pack as the finish line approaches. But the problem with this is that if Jakob does want a fast pace, he might have to be the one to set the early tempo. And if he does run in the lead, he will be draining more energy than everyone else. In 2022 and 2023, Jakob led for much of the race, and unfortunately for Jakob, this left him very vulnerable. And upon reaching 200 meters to go, both Jake Whiteman and Josh Kerr attacked at the perfect time. If history is any indication, this year's Olympics will be won by the athlete that can hold a fast early pace and throw in a kick better than anyone else. And while Jakob still has a solid chance at winning, many are calling for someone else to bring home the Olympic gold. Thanks for watching, everyone, and as always, until next time. Thank you.